Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So my name's Katie and today we're going to be doing the most exciting video of the year <laughs> and that is my top 10 books of 2020. So these are my favourite 10 books that I read in the year of 2020 which was a year. <laughs> um, but yeah considering the like state of the world in 2020 I think I actually had like a quite a good year for me personally just because like I went back to uni and I'm proud of myself for achieving that. <laughs> so yeah, we can all have a little pat on the back. <laughs> um, and yeah, and it just even like surviving for the whole year is an achievement. So I'm very proud of all of you as well. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I feel like most of the books, if not all of the books <laughs> on this list are kind of fantasy sci-fi, but that is not surprising if you're watching my channel. So let's just get started. So the first one is my favourite book probably of the year and just ever at all. I just love it. And that is Rhythm of War by Brandon Sanderson. So this is the fourth book in the Stormlight Archive. And it is no secret <laughs> that the Stormlight Archive is like my favourite series ever. So this is probably a little bit biased, but also I really love this installment. I just love the direction certain characters went, like Kaladin. I just, ugh, I loved his arc so much. And just, I'm so proud of him. And I just always start crying whenever I think about him. <laughs> And I also really love the kind of theme of Navani and so she's kind of the focus character of this book. I'm just kind of coming into herself and realising her like worth as a woman and just realising that she can sort of almost live for herself rather than for who she is to other people and just sort of getting over the kind of abusive relationship she had in the past and just yeah and oh and Raboniel who is a new character that we meet in Rhythm of War but she is iconic i love her um if you want to hear me gush about her i have like i find a way to as, as rue called me out i find a way to bring her up in every video but yeah i just love her um and her dynamic with navani oh um yeah yeah i really liked learning more about the kind of listeners and the fused who are like the kind of they're not the enemy race but they're like they are kind of the enemy to the elite people but they're sort of it's almost like the Aletheia are actually the bad guys. <laughs> but yeah, learning more about the listeners was so good. Um, I love Vanili, who is one of the listeners. And she's also quite a major focus in this book. Because in each Stormlight book, we get flashbacks. And she gets flashbacks in this one. And I feel like the flashbacks just <laughs> were so kind of precious. <laughs> um, yeah, and I just love this, just everything. The whole, there's a storyline which is kind of about a siege of a tower. Um, or not a siege, like a infiltration or what's it called like a hostile takeover type thing and i just love that and the, how some certain characters are like they're in the tower but they're not being caught but they're sort of like they'll keep popping up out of the woodwork and yeah it was just i love that whole storyline so yeah i really enjoyed this book and obviously <laughs> it's like my favorite book so yeah uh rhythm of war has a special place in my heart i'm gonna i think i'm gonna do another bookshelf tour soon because i've had like a rearrange and stuff um you may have noticed i have like a new setup here you can't see it but i have my six of crows editions and then i do have gideon and harrow but they are currently in the pile <laughs> spoiler for later in the video and next we have the sword of kagen by emma wong and i love this book so much i think my goodreads review is like a million stars or something <laughs> um, or I just put one and lots of zeros I don't know the exact number oh it's so good it's so like emotionally devastating but also really kind of empowering <laughs> I don't know so we're following Masaki who is this kind of she's a wife to this Matsuda family but no well she's a wife to Matsuda Takeru but this Matsuda family is kind of this almost like not famous family but they're kind of famous for these things called the whispering blades which are like blades that they kind of summon out of ice so it's kind of it's almost like water bending on crack <laughs> um yeah and and so Masaki in the past she grew up in this kind of city and we get her flashbacks and she's kind of almost like part of this like superhero team <laughs> um but now she's kind of very much living with like her regrets of the past and she's sort of quite like closed off um She's almost living in the past, but Takeru's quite like, doesn't treat her very well. Um, yeah, and then we're also following Mamoru, who is Misaki's oldest son. And she, and he's just, he's so cute. Um, and yeah, so we're following them. And then this kind of war is coming to this village um, that they live in. 
so it's kind of following that. I feel like a lot of it is kind of Misaki's like character growth and also Takeri's character growth. <laughs> I'm a Takeri apologist. Yeah, there's just so many super emotional scenes and the kind of climax of the book is like about 50 to 60 percent and I actually really like that because I feel like it gives you the whole like second half to sort of deal with the emotional consequences of this war and like really see the characters grow and also seeing Masaki like learn to stand up for herself and just just oh it's just so good she's such as like a nuanced and, and like inner resilience type character which I always love and she's just she's she's an amazing character and just the kind of tragedy of her like life and just things she goes through and just what she kind of perseveres through and also there's this kind of element of sisterhood as well with um I think like her sister-in-law and then this other woman from the village and they have a really great dynamic which I really love that and just and I also really love the kind of setting so like I said it's almost like water bending and um, but also so it's kind of this world is quite like modern technology but then they're quite isolated on this peninsula and it feels quite like non-technological I don't think that's the real word <laughs> but but yeah so that's that one okay then next we have Gideon and Harry the ninth because oh these books are just worm their way into my heart and now they're like one of my favorite series and I so I read them twice this year because I read them the first time and then I reread them and honestly I'm tempted to like reread them near the start of 2021 just because I, I just love them <laughs> my babies I even bought like physical copies because I love them that much because I I read them on audio and um, so now I own like two versions <laughs> um yeah and also they're both on this list only taking one spot though because I just could not decide <laughs> which one I like more because I love them both for their like own merits like Gideon is just it's such a great kind of contained story almost um and yeah and Gideon's such a, a great character and she, so we're kind of following Gideon and she is been brought up in this ninth house and one day the kind of reverend daughter of the ninth house Harry Hogg sort of recruits Gideon to be her cavalier which is like a bodyguard to go to this competition on this other planet where they're trying to compete to be a lictor who's like essentially a god they're trying to like ascend to be a lictor basically and yes but then it turns into this like competition between all the different houses to see who can like discover the secrets to lictorhood first and then it also starts to become a bit of a mid mystery because characters keep dying and it's all set in this like gothic manor type canaan house thing um and yeah but, and Gideon is just an iconic character but also her like banter and her dynamic with Harrow is so funny because they like they hate each other but you know secretly deep down they like really need each other and there's just so many like lines like I want one flesh water and like tattooed on me somewhere but I don't really like tattoos so <laughs> maybe not but um yeah that was just oh I'm such a simp for them and all the other characters as well are really good like the other houses I love some of them and especially in the second book when we find out more about some of the other characters I love and Harrow is just it's such like a mind fuck of a book but it's it's a masterpiece and Harrow is quite a, a delight to follow but she's also like completely kind of crazy um and we also in this one we kind of have like a almost pantheon of gods type dynamic which I love and the god emperor is <laughs> so funny he's called John <laughs> and just some of the jokes in Harrow are so like priceless um there's this like running gag that um one of the characters she's always talking about Harrow is like but she's only 10 years old and then as the book goes on it gradually gets like lower and lower so I think at first it's like but she's only 15 years old and then it goes down to 12 and then 10 and then <laughs> by the end of the book but she's only two years old <laughs> um yeah so oh, I just I love everything about it there's some really iconic scenes like if you read it the soup scene <laughs> the threesome scene oh <laughs> the first scene <laughs> um but yeah, and just the ending is amazing. I'm so excited for the third book. I'm really sad we have to wait till 2022. But it's just, it's great. It's iconic. Like the necromancy, the characters. Oh, I just, I love it. Oh. And it's so like unashamedly gay as well. I, I love it. Gideon has these like magazines which like frontline titties of the fifth or something. Oh, I think that's a fake one. But she, it, it's just, it's so funny. She's, ugh. Oh. I love them. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so now you can see my my setup. <laughs>
And then the plant just gets wedged in. You can't see Boo anymore. Very sad. He's down here. He's still around. He's just been relegated. Let's pop him back. Now he's in the camera. Can't really see his hat though. Oh no. There we go. <laughs> um, okay. Then next we have The Unspoken Name by Aiko Lockwood. And I feel like this one just... <laughs> I don't know. I just enjoyed it so much. Um, like the audiobook was really good. So following this character called Sorway and she has kind of been brought up in this almost like cult thing. And she's kind of been raised to be sacrificed to this like um monster. I think it's called the unspoken one. Um and yeah, but then like the day before she's due to be sacrificed, this kind of sorcerer guy comes along and convinces her to like run away with him so she sort of goes and becomes his apprentice and so that's sort of the start of the book but then we kind of have a time jump and then later on we're following Sawyer when she's kind of grown up and she along with her sort of semi-adopted brother type character called Tao they sort of go on this mission to this other um country to try and hunt down this ar artifact for the sorcerer guy whose name I can't remember <laughs> Um, and there they meet these other characters, one of whom is this like necromancer scholar type character called she's Millie and her and Sawe have this like relationship which oh it's so good, it's so it's, like soft but also so like oh yeah and then there's various drama ensues and like betrayals and this like I just really enjoyed it and I love the whole like the whole like vibe of the book with like the sort of it's a bit like necromancy but also just the kind of I don't know, and Soe and Tal, they, they like have this bickering siblings, they're so funny. Um, yeah, I just, I had a great time reading it, so. But I feel like it's kind of, it, it does have some mixed reviews, but I really loved it. I feel like if you like the kind of chaotic, like, energy, <laughs> like The Ruin of Kings and Gideon, like those kind of books, I feel like this one really um, suits that. So yeah, I really enjoyed this one, and I feel like more people need to read it please. <laughs> Next we have The Memory of Souls, or yeah, The Memory of Souls. I can never remember if it's A Memory of Souls or The Memory of Souls um, by Jen Leons. And this is the third book in the Ruin of Kings um, series. And I really enjoyed this series so much. I love like Kieran and Janelle and Terry F. They're like, they're three main characters and they're like my babies. <laughs> um, and I really, this is my favourite instalment just because we learn like so much more, especially about the gods. And I'm a sucker for like a, the type of dynamic where these like gods or powerful historical figures like come back and get themselves involved in the like current goings on and then you sort of have these like four characters who are all part of this prophecy um and their dynamic in this book is really good because I feel like in the first two so the first book we're kind of following Kieran and his story and then the second one we're following Janelle and her story and then in this book everyone starts to sort of come together um which is really good and I love this kind of OT3 dynamic between Janelle, Kieran and Terrier. And it's basically like a Cal and Polly relationship, which is oh, so good. And in the fourth book, we've been promised um, explicit sex scenes. So I'm very excited for that. But yeah, so th this series is just, it's so like crazy and chaotic and like bonkers. <laughs> um, and yeah, there's a lot of like convoluted family politics and like characters can soul swap. So, and also they kind of reincarnate as well. So like the characters that you meet, some of them are either in like a different body or, and then some of them are like reincarnations of past lives. And it's, it's just so good. There's, there's like so much going on. <laughs> but yeah, and also I really love the um, villains in the series. So there's like two kind of, so Relos Bar is like the main villain and then um, his like, assistant called Serenaya and they're so interesting because for a kind of quite a bit of the book or quite yeah you sort of you're almost on their side or like you can kind of see where they're coming from and like are they kind of it's almost like their goals are, are better <laughs> than the protagonist because the protagonists have kind of been manipulated by the almost like god like figures it sort of gives me a bit of the like gods give me kind of the same energy as like the heralds from the stuff my archive where like they like basically screw humanity over um yeah so i just really like exploring that dynamic in this one and it's a great series in general i would highly recommend it Okay, then next we have Jade City and Jade World. This is another one where I couldn't choose between them. So they're both <laughs> on here taking up one spot. Um, yeah, I just, I read these at the start of the year, like before they got super popular, but now I feel like they're super like hyped on booktube, which is great because they deserve so much love. 
and yeah i'm so excited to like have people to talk about them with and stuff so jade city and dude world by Funderly. and the first one so we're following um this kind of family called the cause and they are the like heads of the no peak clan so in the city called cape Cod, we have these clans who are like basically gangs <laughs> and they sort of control the jade um trade and jade is basically this like hot commodity in the world where people who have jade get like powers from it um and this, and jade is almost when when i read it anyway it gave me sort of like it's sort of almost like a drug of how it's kind of treated and how it's like distributed and, and that kind of thing um and yeah it's like very kind of gangster vibes it really reminds me a lot of peaky blinders <laughs> the tv show it's like some of the, the character parallels are just <laughs> um yeah and so we're following this family so the main the main four i would say we follow is lan who's like the head of the clan and then hilo who's younger brother and he is sort of the like enforcer almost and then shay who is a sister and she's just come back from abroad so she's trying to kind of reintegrate into the family and she's quite like yeah that's a very interesting story like i, I love shay so much and then andon who's um like the cousin and he is kind of still in school and like learning fighting <laughs> martial arts i don't know um yeah so we're following them and just events happening in the city there's quite a lot of like politics and this right rival clan shocking things happen and especially the ending of jade war oh um but yeah i the main highlight for the series i think for me is the characters like shay i love her she's a great character and then he's so precious when who is hilo's wife i love her she's really like kind of under understated and it's like subtle almost and she sort of subtly kind of defies gender roles of the time because Hilo is quite, quite like traditional but but when really sort of takes her own power into her hands or her own like destiny into her hands I guess um yeah which is really good to see um yeah so I just I really love this series I would highly recommend it um I feel like I should reread soon and I'm so excited for Jade Legacy which comes out this year well next year I'm filming this like one day before the end of 2020 so <laughs> it will be this year when you see it but it's next year for me um so yeah okay the next we have Caliban's War which is the second book in the Expanse series so I love the Expanse series I've um, been reading them this year I think I'm up to the fifth one I've read the fifth one and I also really love the tv show but I feel like the second one still has a special <laughs> place in my heart I feel like ranking they would go Caliban's War, Nemesis Games, whatever the fourth one's called, Chipotle Burn, <laughs> Leviathan Wakes, and then Abaddon's Gate. That's like my rankings for them so far. Um, but yeah, I love Caliban's War. I, I don't know why I love it so much. Just I, I have a love probably, <laughs> and also Bobby. Um, I love them too, and we get a lot of them in Caliban's War. And just the whole like arc of the book, and the sort of farm, like the Ganymede and the like farmer vibe <laughs> I really like and um, we also get quite a lot of the Rossi crew um so the series we're following this crew of the Rossinante and um, there's like four of them Holden, Alex, Naomi and Amos and I love them all especially Amos oh I love him <laughs> so they sort of get themselves involved in this like big conspiracy and there's also this thing called the proto molecule so that is this like alien substance and the first one's sort of kind of discovering about that and then the series just sort of expands from there and yeah Caliban's War is just my favourite one <laughs> in the series but it's a really good series um, for like sci-fi if you if you like sci-fi um yeah I don't know if it's the best beginner series it's it's like I feel like it's good like beginner like major space opera but I feel like maybe if it's like the very first sci-fi book you've ever read maybe not but I don't know okay then next we have Empire of Gold or The Empire of Gold by S.A. Chakraborty and this is the final book in the David Bad series which oh I love this series <laughs> and I just love the ending all the characters I just adore like Nari and Ali and oh I love them and yeah I just really enjoyed this finale there was like so much kind of emotion especially towards the end with like Nari's kind of backstory almost and I'm a huge simp for the villain of the series, Maniza. <laughs> um, yeah, just the, the tragic, like, older woman villain. Oh, oh. Um, 
yeah i just i love <laughs> yeah so the first one in the series is kind of following nari and she's this, like con artist living in cairo and one day she accidentally summons this djinn called Dara, who kind of takes her away to this city called Devabad. And in Devabad, there's a lot of sort of political strife. And yeah, Nari sort of ends up embroiled in that. And then we're also following Ali, who's the prince of Devabad. And he's kind of, he's quite righteous. And at the start of the series, he's trying to kind of fight for rights of the Shafi, who are like half djinn, half human. Um, but he's sort of slightly misguided. <laughs> um, or not misguided, like, what's the word? He's... He's not quite going about his achieving his goals in the right way. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just watching him grow throughout the series. And I just love the whole magic and the, like the city of Davabad and like the politics and the kind of family, like inter-family politics is so good. And just the way like the books have a kind of time jumps between them and the, that kind of allows this like time to brew of these like really kind of tense scenarios. Um, yeah so i just really enjoyed the series and i love it i love all the characters and it has some of my favorite like sibling dynamics like um ali and muntadir and zayna they're like three siblings and they're great and then nari and she has a sibling who you find out later in the series and he, their dynamic is the best as well so yeah okay the next we have check please volumes one and two although i think volume two is my favorite but they're down here where you can't see them <laughs> but um I just I I but I don't want to get them out because like that shelf is wedged really tightly together. <laughs> and so I'll put a picture in. Um, but I just I love this series. I feel like it just has such a special place in my heart because like when I read it, it was a day when I was like feeling really grumpy and sad, and and I just read them in the afternoon like on my laptop because you could read them for free online, which I'll leave a link in the description. <laughs> um, and it just cheered me up so much. It's just like so heartwarming and so cute and just like Bitty, who's the main character, so just following his story. I just, it just made like my heart feel so much. Like it reminds me a lot of Heartstopper. So if you like that, I feel like you definitely like um, Check Please. And just the whole like, oh, it's just, mm. <laughs> Um, like ooh, ooh. Um, I need to stop saying that um, but yeah just uh so we're following Bitty who's like he's going to college for the first time and he sort of has this like online blog which kind of baking he loves to bake but he's kind of joining the ice hockey team as well so it's just kind of following his journey of like becoming friends with this ice hockey team and like also, it's so cute the way he sort of becomes this like mother hen to these, all these like frat boys, no not frat, all these like hockey boys and he just does all the like baking for them and it's so precious. And they're all such iconic characters as well. There's like this pair of himbos <laughs> who I love. And um, yeah, just the whole dynamic. I feel like I, I don't really know anything about ice hockey, but I feel like if you like ice hockey, you will really love this because it just, it feels kind of nostalgic in a way even though I've never, <laughs> I've never even watched ice hockey, let alone played it. But yeah, and just the relationship is so sweet and cute as well. You don't get a lot of it, especially in the first volume, but I just feel like it's, it's just wholesome. And Bitty's the cutest little cinema role. So yeah, I really, I love that series. That's like a graphic novel highlight for me of 2020. Then the last one, I'm gonna cheat a little bit because I know I said I wouldn't include any arcs in this list, but this one, I just read it and I loved it so so much so I had to include it and it's not in my like top 10 of July to January but oh no July to December but I just and by the time this video goes up it'll be coming out really soon so I feel like I can include it and you can all get pre-ordering and that is a winter's orbit and this one just it's again it's one that like gives me Becky Chambers vibes and it just but it's like it has this perfect balance of like romance and sort of politics and like humour and it the best way I can describe it is like a cross between red white and royal blue and a memory called empire it's 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 just it's so like that like it's like the kind of so it's this arranged marriage that gets set up between this prince called Kian and this um ambassador from a different planet called Jayen and so basically Kian so Jayen was married to Kian's cousin called Tam, but Tam mysteriously dies. So then, but in order for this treaty to like happen, because there's this um like treaty which is kind of unity between these like seven planets or something, then there has to be this like arrangement of marriage to like satisfy this overarching galactic force called the resolution. So yeah, so they end up in this arranged marriage and 
and so in the kind of book this watching now sort of slowly fall in love but also this political situation and like investigating how Tam died and also kind of just things that are going on like with the kind of this like almost what's it called <laughs> like there's almost like a military coup type thing going on but yeah and I feel like it just has the perfect balance of like romance and politics and then there's a scene where they like end up crushed in the wild and then have to like survive together and it just has so many like romance tropes which I love but then also the characters are so precious like Kiem is like this little sunshine prince he reminds me a lot of Adeline kind of from the Stormlight Archive and then Jian's like quite quiet and reserved and he's very you sort of get this sense that there's something sort of happened to him because he's very like I don't know if eager to please is the right word but like he's kind of very diminished but also he's trying so hard to like be this like good husband and like ambassador type thing but yeah it's so like heartbreaking because it's kind of he was in this abusive relationship and just seeing him sort of discover himself and like realizing what's happened to him and just that journey and then Kiam's there just kind of being supportive and just being this really like nice nice person and oh it's just so precious um yeah I just I loved it I'm gonna read it like as soon as it comes out and like have the physical copy pre-ordered and stuff because oh I just loved it it's like the kind of heartwarming sci-fi which is always my favorite kind of sci-fi just oh um yeah oh I just really enjoyed it so yeah that's also on my list <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed this video let me know what your favorite book of 2020 was in the comments and if you enjoyed the video please give it a like and consider subscribing if you haven't already and I hope you're all having a great day and I will see you next time